coming. You think you, you're not protected out here. And that's how we are as a people. But nevertheless, he tells you, keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh or near unto them? As it is written, only you have known of all the nations of the earth, therefore I will punish you for all your iniquity. He says, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. He goes on to write, and what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I said before you this day? Now notice what he says here in verse 9. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. Then he goes on to say, but teach them thy sons and thy son's sons. Now that was a, a slide up, and we're not going to worry about it, but I'll just talk about what was on it. When you look at even what a son is, but we'll go back to that. We'll go back to that later. We'll go back to that later. Let's pick it up in verse uh, 10. He says, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in order, when the Lord said unto me, gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. So what are you supposed to do as a man? You're supposed to teach your children, your sons in particular. Because, and why, and you're supposed to teach your children in general, your sons in particular, why? Because your sons are going to be the spiritual heads of their family. So you got to teach it from generation to generation to generation. Let's pick it up at uh, Ephesians. That's what he's telling you. Same th a similar thing in the New Testament. We're in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 6, and we'll read one verse here. Notice what, it's, what Paul writes to the congregation at Ephesus. He says in verse 4, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. What does that mean? You have to teach your children and direct them spiritually. They know the Lord through you. So they know the Lord through you, and then for the woman, you make the conditions and the circumstances necessary so that she can serve the Lord properly. That's, that, again, this goes beyond you just having a job, going to work every day. Let's pick it up at, uh, let's pick it up in the book of Psalms. We'll come back to Ephesians later. We're in Psalms, the 78 division. And one of the main problems right now, you had this dysfunction, one of our main problems in our, amongst our people is our young people. And they say, oh, these kids crazy, these kids crazy. Yeah, they, they crazy, all right, because the crazy adults have not given them what they need. So now in Psalms 78 and verse one, Asaph writes, give ear, O my people, to, to my law, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. He says, I will open my mouth in the parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. See, it's something that needs to be passed down from generation to generation. He said, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. See, that's what you as a man have to teach your children. Like if, for example, if you read in Deuteronomy the sixth chapter, he talks about how in the, in the 20th verse about the mighty deliverance of the Lord that he gave to his, to his people. And those children, you need to pass down that history of who they are. You need to pass down that history of what they, sh or, or, or rather the, um, the law to them. And what so you so they would know what they should be doing. And verse 20 it says, And when thy son asketh thee in time to come, saying, What mean the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord our God hath commanded you? In other words, your son will come to you and ask you, Why should I be serving the Lord? You tell him, Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's bondmen in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders great and sore upon Egypt, upon Pharaoh, and upon all his household before our eyes. You're not, so you're not teaching them about Santa Claus and how he coming down the chimney. You're teaching them about the Lord, and this is why we do this. That's passed down through many. 
That's who's supposed to pass it down. That's saying a woman can't tell her son or daughter what you're supposed to be doing well, according to what's said the Lord. But it is the responsibility of the man. So back in Psalm 78 and verse 4, it said, We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works which he have done. What did he do? It said, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should what? That they should make them known to what? To their children. It is the fathers who are supposed to do this. Proverbs, the 22nd chapter. Proverbs 22nd chapter. Because now we can understand what this means here. Proverbs the 22nd chapter. And we'll pick it up at verse 6. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. When you're ready, brother, go ahead and read. Train up a child in the way he should go. You're supposed to train up a child in the way in which he should go. How is that? We just read in Ephesians in the nursery and admonition of the Lord, right? You're supposed to train your child up in the way in which he should go. See, it's not like the children going to be born into the world and they're just automatically going to be on the right track. They're going to automatically know the Lord. No, more than likely, if you do not do what you're supposed to do as a man, your children are going to be on the wrong track and they're not going to know the Lord. That's usually how that works. I see it every day. Again, I like them to... To weeds in a field, in an uncultivated field, you have not given the child what they need, but then you expect them to produce. He said, train up a child in the way he should go. What way? The righteous path. And it said, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. But you got to give him a foundation. You even see, you lay the foundation and you got a kid, you, you constantly, because every child is not the same. Some need more than others. Some need more redirection than others. You got some out walking away. You know, a lot of times you lay that foundation, you know what happened? Life will beat them up. And they'll be like that prodigal son. And he said, I'm going back to my father's house. I'm going back. I'm going back to what he gave me because what I thought this world was about ain't it. You got to, you got to give them a foundation though. Let's pick it back up in Ephesians 6. You have to do that as a man. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Because we've seen what the man is supposed to do. Second Timothy. What is that? Second Timothy. Oh, Second Timothy. Thank you, brother. I got ahead of myself. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, the third chapter. Because, yeah, sec thank you. Second Timothy, the third chapter. We want to see the benefit of giving that child... Uh, spiritual direction. Teaching them about what thus saith the Lord. What's the benefit of that? 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and we'll read one verse here, verse 15. Because what does Paul tell Timothy? And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Now he said, and that, and that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Now we should understand that in Timothy's case, his mother was a Jewish or an Israelite, and his father was a Greek. It was a Gentile. So now his mother was a believer grandmother was a believer, this is a case in which they imparted that unto him. But we see in Torah, technically, it's supposed to be the man. Right? It's your responsibility. But what other than that, what is the benefit for you passing this to the child? Go, let's start from the top. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture. He said, you've known the word from a child that what? Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. That these, these it said, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. Through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. My father used to give me all kind of stuff when I was a kid. Gifts all the time. At my baseball game, support me in all kind of stuff. But the best thing he gave me was the word. He said, and now from a child that has known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wiser to salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Let's pick it, now let's pick it up in Ephesians. That's what we need to give our children. So now, as children, don't just sit there. That brother says, daycare here today. Yeah, you got it, more kids. That's good. I'm over the adults have more kids. So now, <laughs> so now, you got the kids. So now the kids said, what, what, what about me? Yeah, everybody got a role. So what you supposed to do? I'm, let me tell you, it's not act a fool. Let me tell you, it's not to be a rebel. 
be disobedient, what did he say? Verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. See, he said, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So the child, you got it easy. You ain't got to go out and work, right? You don't have, well, your only thing you have to do is be obedient unto your parents. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So in the eyes of the Lord, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Let's keep reading. Honor thy father and mother. He said, honor your father and your mother. You know, the father, the said, if I'm a father, where be my honor? See, you, we don't understand order, so we don't understand where reverence is supposed to be shown. Because we don't understand order and we don't understand that, we don't understand we're supposed to be honoring him. Because we don't understand things, children don't understand they're supposed to be honoring their parents. They don't show respect to the elderly. Who are you? Kids today will say, who are you? I'm not respecting you just because you're an adult. There was a time where actually you were an adult that would garner you some respect from you. Not today. Not today because everything is out of order. But a child, as they say, needs to stay in a child's place. Your child, your child's place is one of submission unto their parents, obedience. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. He said, honor thy father and thy mother, which is what? Which is the first commandment with promise. What's the promise? Go ahead and read. That it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. That you on long life obey your mother and your father. It's really simple. This, is, this, this lesson is not rocket science. But it's definitely needed when you, you know that when you look at the world. Proverbs, the 20th chapter. Because it came out and he said, oh, well, you know, me, you know, I serve the Lord maybe one day. Right now, I just want to kind of do what I want to do. I want to be a kid. Okay. Let's pick it up at uh, Proverbs, the 20th chapter. You know, because he said, you know, foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. And a round of correction will drive it far from him. Cause that, and that's on men, too. What you need to be, you need to impart a moral code, which is Torah, into your child. And then when they veer off of that, you know, like a shepherd's rod, kapaya, you need to get them right back on the road. Not just, not just it's in wrath, right? You haven't given them what they need, but you got some kind of expectation of them. I see that all the time, too. You're expecting a child to do something you never taught them to do. How are they going to do it? They don't even know better. Because why? Because you have not taught them. But you want to come, and when they acting a fool, you want to curse them out. Do they know better? Or are they just following your trifling example? What does he say in verse 11? Even a child is known by his doing. He said, even a child is known by his doings. The Lord take heed and is looking at you and what you do as a child. Like the brother asked last night, oh, well, what's going to happen to all these young, these young kids in these gangs killing each other? And then, are they going to go to the lake of fire? The Lord is the judge, but I wouldn't want that on my, on my record. Well, you've been raised in hell as a young child. You're 12 years old. You kill people, done all kind of stuff. And then you end up dying out in the streets like a dog. I wouldn't want that on my record. He said, even a child is known by his doings, whether what? Whether his work be pure or whether it be right. He, he's, even the Lord is looking at what you do as a child. So children need to take heed to that. He, and he sees you. So that's one thing about it. You, you know, being around kids, you need to understand kids, have, they have, I won't say split personality. They got a personality in the way they act in front of their parents. And then they got how they really act in front of their peers. If you could, if you could, if they had like a, you know how they interrogate people and they take them in the room and they don't know that there's some people observing them behind the glass. Man, if you could go into a classroom and see your children. If you can see your children behind the glass, you can sit there. Not my Cleophus. Yeah, your Cleophus is a fool. Cleophus being here acting a fool. If you can just see Cleophus, but when you come around, he, you know, he act like he got some sense. But the Lord is looking at you though. See, mama and daddy not always there, especially today. But nah, the Lord see what you're doing. And he is a righteous judge. A lot of times, you, you know better, you can do better, even as a kid. You know, you know certain things you shouldn't be doing. 
Let's pick it up in Colossians, the third chapter. This is it. Because he gives you the order very clearly here. And if everybody play their position, maybe we can win this game. Colossians 3 and verse 18. When you ready, brother, go ahead and read. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband uh -huh. as it is fit in the Lord. So again, what, what, I'm supposed, what you're supposed to be doing again, submitting to your husband, to your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. What's the husband supposed to be doing? Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. It said, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Talk about them, you know, being a weaker vessel. You the strength of the home. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. What, what about the children? What do they have to do? Children, obey your parents in all things. Why? For this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. He said, obey your parents in all things. So again, wives submit, husbands love, children obey. And that's the righteous familiar order. So I'm going to pray to you at the front. This is the Household of Faith announcements. You can find us on the web at IsraelTeach.org or on our Israel Teach YouTube page. We also have Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Zoom. The personal meeting ID is 845-7108-8849. Again, that's 845-7108-8849. Our question and answer Bible study is at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. The personal meeting ID for that is 602-961-1318. Again, that's 602 961-1318. The household of faith has a dress code. This is for the brothers. Brothers should not wear head coverings during services. This includes but is not limited to hats, caps, scarves, turbans, beanies, and stocking caps. All attire should not be form-fitting. Form-fitting is defined as clothing that fits the body tightly so that the bodily shape is clearly visible. For example, no skinny jeans are allowed. Pants must be pulled up to the waist. No sagging is allowed. Sagging is defined as a matter of wearing trousers or jeans that sags to the top of the trousers or jeans is significantly below the waist 